As we still with the Islamic punishment, um, some Ahmadis have supported uh, the uh, uh, interpretation of the Quranic verse relating to the punishment of theft as meaning imprisonment or something else other than the actual amputation of the hands. Is such a view valid, particularly since it's contrary to the practice of the Holy Prophet, or so it appears? It all stems from a meaning attributed to Fateya. Some people insist that Fateya, the word used for the, by the Holy Quran, for severing one hand, also means to put somebody out of circulation, to make him ineffective. And uh, they also quote from the Holy Quran referring to the word Tabat Yada Abi Lahabin Vata. And it says that virtually, practically, now not virtually but practically, literally, the hands of Abu Lahab were never severed and they remained intact and healthy. They were not destroyed. But virtually he was destroyed and he, he was made ineffective in his efforts to destroy Islam. So taking their cue from this as well, they say that if a thief is made ineffective in any manner, so that he cannot steal again, that purpose is also served by this verse. So that is why we say, but it's an open question. It has to be investigated and uh, found out definitely to what, what extent. But as far as the practical, the first uh, uh, literal translation is concerned, we know positively that the Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered the severing of hand. And one should not be ashamed of this. If you are running away from this through shame, being ashamed of Islamic teaching while you are facing a modern world, this is the wrong attitude. Because that will be insulting as Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam too. Because if a, a, an act is to be ashamed of in his time, uh, then it should be an act of, of shame for this time as well. And vice versa. So, that is nothing to be ashamed of. In fact, as I mentioned earlier, the Islamic system of punishment has to be examined in context of Islamic moral teaching and the atmosphere of high moral standards which Islam endeavors to establish in the society. When that happens, then the society rises to such heights as crimes become very rare and unnatural. Without uh, creating that society, if we go for criminal punishment, we will be doing great injustice to Islam. For example, it is also established that anybody who steals because the hunger compels him, his hand will never be severed. So in a society where millions of people are left unattended and many of them die of hunger and their basic needs are not uh, uh, provided by that society, however big love they claim be to Islamization, they do not deserve and they have no right to introduce Islamic system of punishment because Islamic system of provision has not been, produced, has not been produced. An Islamic system of morality has not been introduced. So, to go for an Islamic punishment without all these prerequisites is totally wrong. This is why it looks so strange. And then there is an Islamic standard of uh, evidence, and the whole society is turned into a truthful society. Without that, if you, for example, introduce the Islamic system of punishment for fornication or adultery in a country, I shouldn't name any country because they would be, they would be heard, maybe. But there are certain countries where it is a common crime 
and it's a common crime to tell lies. And for five rupees or so, you can buy evidence. So, if Islamic system of punishment is introduced in such a country, what would happen? That the few people who do not indulge in fornication, they would be killed, and they will be lashed by those who indulge in fornication. And it's so easy for them to produce false evidence. So, if the standard of evidence is totally un-Islamic. How can you introduce Islamic system of punishment? It is putting the horse before the uh, cart before the horse. First, create the prerequisites which Islam creates with effort and labor. And as the Prophet Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam created with great endeavor, then you have a right to introduce the punishment part, which will come in the end, not before.